Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Thursday morning trading session. So we just saw the markets open up. And uh, yesterday was actually a pretty good session. Um, in the afternoon, the market finally tailed off a little bit. It gave us some nice opportunities there. And now we find ourselves trading back at yesterday's low. No real overnight gap to speak of. We are producing a, uh, a sell signal here on the Eagle. It's important to remember though that this is potentially a sideways trading range. So with a potential trading range, we usually want to avoid selling the bottom. We want to try to sell up here somewhere, perhaps off of another green bar sell. But what you could do is you could set up to take, say, a second push on this signal, cover above the high. Oh, no, I can't. No, trade manager won't allow me to do that. Let's see if we can get in with something a little bit tighter, perhaps, on the, maybe the Falcon. Again, the Falcon producing trend change signals. So getting the same kind of look as we did on the Eagle. And of course, it's still very early. All right, well, we, what time is it? Oh, okay, the market's been open for a couple of minutes. And if the market retreats here and heads higher, I'll have good reason to cancel that order. But you can see it's very conflicted at the moment. Here the hawk, all full of yellow bars. The raptor did produce a uh, soft edge buy signal here. No follow through on that yet. All right, I do believe we got filled here on our short order here on the Falcon. So we'll try to manage this one down to our profit level. So we should get our break even trigger here shortly. And you know what, I'm tempted to let it run out, but I think I'll take my profit on target if we get it. We got a breakdown here below the primary support. So very often we'll see the market move two zones, in which case we could see a trading down here around 47.57 half. That's where the next support zone is right now we're getting a little bit of an early reaction here darn it scoundrels
Well, if they're not going to head lower, we might well see a bounce higher. As the market gets back into these yellow bars here on the hawk, uh, we've got one more green bar sell right up here near the highs. Okay, with the green bar sell, of course, the uh, these signals tend to develop near the end of a trend. If you can, well, I suppose you can call this a trend, a little bit of a downward move. And with the green bar sell, you always have the option of setting up to buy the failure of the signal. The nice thing about the counter trend signals is it's very obvious where your stops need to go. Right? It needs to go below that swing low. We haven't seen a retest of the extreme Although, when the market's sideways like this, this may well turn out to be the, the test of the extreme right here, even though it's a new low. So normally, if this were a nice smooth progression lower, I would expect one more push lower, in which case I would be a lot more comfortable sh shorting this market. I don't know if I want to go in for the whole two percent risk. It's a very strong opening bar right here, this big run up. All right, maybe what we'll do is I'll just throw a single on there. And perhaps we'll try to cover it up there. We'll see if we can't scalp out with just a quick little move lower if, in fact, the sellers are going to continue to knock the buyers down here. Cancel that order, and it looks like the buyers are going to take their turn. Okay, a possible first micro macro cross signal now in the hawk. You can see we're up against the hard edge here in the eagle as well as the raptor on those trading bands. So what I would do with this first micro macro cross signal is I would probably um, wait until we breach the high. Right now it's one, two, three, four, five, well, five ticks. It's halfway to our profit objective. All right. <clears throat> I keep telling you what a high probability signal the first micro macro cross is. So I guess time to put my money where my mouth is. 
the safer entry is above the high. The safer entry is above 4780 ish. So that all the buyers are going to be able to think so. Um, good question, Andrew. Andrew asks, would you say that DTS is a breakout system? Well, the signals do tend to develop uh, differently. Normally, what people refer to when they say a breakout system, they mean, you know, the market recognizes previous highs, right? So we'll look at here, and it trades a breakout there. You see lows, it breaks out here. In this case, both these times, it coincided with the first micro macro cross, right? First micro macro cross lower, first micro macro cross higher. Uh, but no, I don't think I, I would say that it's a breakout system because there's trend signals as well you know once a trend has been established we get our macro pullback signals our consolidation patterns the hawk <clears throat> pardon me the hawk in particular pays attention it has uh, certain pricing activity that it takes into its calculations. But it, uh, DTS does not shy away from breakouts, I, I know that. And that makes me a little bit nervous because <laughs> I learned early on that breakouts can be difficult to trade and as such I was always a little gun shy about taking a breakout trade Crude oil also in a little bit of a rally kind of mood. After a bit of a sideways type session, we got our trend change signal slash late filter entry. 
shortly after the North American Open. That'd be right around here. Nice little bounce off of primary support. I think it's going to be a little bit sideways today, actually. Or that's how it appears to be. So we're seeing a little bit of uh, conflicting signals now, which tells you that the market is either going to be moving sideways or it's in a transition. So we got the hawk, that's already looking a little bit bullish. The eagle is into the hard edge and producing or starting to produce a green bar cell signal. We're getting a red warning dot. The falcon already producing its trend change signal, so the falcon getting a little bit more bullish. And here on the Raptor, you could make a case for a cloud crossover signal in that the market is flipping the clouds, retreating into the clouds, and now trying to come out of there. We haven't produced any of these signals yet, mind you, which is kind of waiting for something to play out. So we'll see who gets the upper hand out of this. Right now it's still the bulls. for the time being anyway. So we're getting a macro pullback signal now here in the Hawk. Um, as tempting as this one is, I'm still not convinced that we're outside of this trading range. So I'm hoping it's going to slip into yellow bars here shortly so I can ignore it.
Okay, well, we'll just put that back for now. Soybeans making a solid move lower. Here's soybeans on the Falcon. So the market opens around here, around 6.30, and about five, six minutes later, we get a nice solid sell signal. Could cover it above there, and we're almost to our profit objective. I would expect soybeans to slip a little lower and eventually find that profit target today. Well, just when you think the uh, buyers have control of the market, here come the sellers. And note all the volume on some of these bars here. Very, very heavy selling. Still looking a little range bound to me. If we get this red bar buy signal, that may be worth uh, attempting a sell. Because now we know the limit of the market. right? It may well rally from here. Sometimes shorting it is going to be a little bit easier. Uh, Russell's asking, did you like the green bar sell on the Eagle? Yes, I did, Russell. I was just a little bit late on it. Um, what I might have, well, there's two ways to handle this green bar sell. That's this signal right here. So it, if we are in a trading range, this would be selling near the top end of the range, right? That's what we're looking to do, ideally. We know a green bar sell is a high probability signal. So what you could do is you could either take it on the hash mark or you could wait for it to flip over the ATR line so everything is in sync once that ATR moves over. So in that case, this bar now becomes your signal bar and you could short below here. This is an instance where I would rather have shorted earlier. And the reason is the profit objective. So let's say I set it up something like this. You'll see when I set up the trade this way, before we flip over on the ATR, my profit target is somewhere near these lows. If, however, I wait for the ATR to flip over, it pushes my profit target well past the lows. Now, if the market is in a downtrend, of course, a downtrending market avoids support. It avoids swing lows. So it should not be an issue. However, at, at this stage, we don't really know yet, do we? At this stage, the market is still technically sideways. We are making a lower high. That's good. That tells us the sellers are in control right now. But no, I, I liked it. I just saw it too late. I was looking at, well, whatever I was looking at doesn't really matter. But yes, it's a solid, oops, solid 
uh, green bar cell, definitely. And the earlier entry just gives you more options, right? If you're already short from the hash mark, okay, the market's moving against you a little bit. You're still, you know, five, ten dollars to the good, a, a couple ticks to the good, anyways, depending on what market you're trading. And it's just going to make trade management that much easier. If we can see at least one or two bars print lower, well, then you can easily roll your stops to break even. If you entered below the low of this bar, then you're in a small loss position, but now it's, okay, well, are my stops too close? Should I, cut, should I have cut my stops further away? It just makes for a more difficult trade. Now you could also use this current bar as a second push entry if you wanted to take the delayed entry on the trade. And you could set it up so that on the next push lower, you're going to enter and you're going to keep your fingers crossed that the market can get through these lows. That's acceptable also because you're incorporating that renewed momentum. Oh, now they're starting to swing the other way again. Very, very conflicted this morning. You don't like to see the market signal and then reverse, signal and reverse. It's If anything, you want to see a little bit of a move one way, you know, a little bit of a move higher. Okay, you can feel confident. Maybe the buyers have control. Here's our retest. Here's our soft edge buy. Let's let's go. But that's not what's happening. You know, we get a little bit of a move lower. You think the sellers are in control? They push lower again, no, the market reverses, moves a little bit higher. You think the buyers are in control? Well, maybe, <laughs> we don't know yet. The bottom could fall out here and they could go back and retest the lows. Very characteristic of a sideways kind of market. Uh, Andrew's asking, that's a micro macro cross. If you're referring to the the timing of the green bar sell with what we saw here on the hawk, that's entirely possible. Uh, sometimes the signals will coincide. Sometimes you'll get that overlap. So here they come again. All right, so we've got a double pullback signal here on the Raptor. I may try to short that one, place my stops above the swing high. The double pullback signal, of course, the market moves into the cloud twice, pulls out. Uh, the stronger double pullback signals will print a short signal each time. So that's how an easier way to count. So there's the first pullback. That's how you know that's the first pullback complete. Here's the second pullback complete because we have the second signal.
not looking good. Here, we're going to roll our stops back above the morning high. I don't want it to roll just yet. Come on, settlers, where'd you go? I guess I should have been focusing on crude oil and soybeans this morning. My goodness, what a pronounced move out of uh, crude oil. Right out of the gate, hesitated for a few minutes, 15, 20 minutes, and then beeline higher. And the opposite with soybeans. Right, out of the gate, nice smooth progression lower. And here's the NASDAQ. <laughs> see some spelling come into the market here or this is going to be a very short-lived trade. When the markets are sideways like this, it's usually better to go in light. I know you do anyways. You try to cap your risk, but even so, this is onesie territory, right? If you're a small trader, just try throwing a single on here. You don't want to get too heavily invested as I'm about to get stopped out on the breakout. There they go. They're going to give me a tap. Stinkers. Wow, this is serious resistance. We have got ourselves quite a resistance level here near 4783-ish.
Come on, come on down. Let's see what's going on with the rest of them. No, still sideways, still very uncommitted. I'm going to see the market try to tick higher here. Somebody's going to take out 47.83, and then we're going to see a move higher. So. If you're short, this is probably a good place to put your stops. As a move through 47.83 is probably going to see the market move a little higher still. All right, well, let's throw that one on the shelf. It is looking a little bit like a buyer's market right now. Let's see if they're able to follow through. If you're following the eagle here, we now have technically a rule of three type setup. I wouldn't look as far back as this buy signal to say this is a rule of three, but rather this is enough. Uh, with the rule of three. We've had our uh, test of the extreme. We've got a couple of counter trend signals. I do expect the market to come down one more time. And if the trend is truly reversing, then we're going to get another buy signal. the joys of trading a market that's in a sideways trading range. Buyers and sellers both pretty evenly matched here. And you can see the conflicting signals still going on. So we're getting a first micro macro cross signal here to buy. A lot of yellow bars preceding this, so in the back of your mind, you should still be thinking trading range. Another cloud crossover attempt, this one a little bit more uh, textbook. So we'll see if the Raptor comes out of here with a buy signal. We can try to get on board with that. see that signal engage there so we've got our first micro macro cross long 
And let's see now if we can't get a signal here on the Raptor, or perhaps even a trend change signal on the Falcon. Now, I'll just reiterate it in case somebody hasn't heard me say this in the past. I should look at the eagle because it defines it a little better. If you suspect the market is in a sideways trading range, even a smallish range like this, the best course of action is just to wait, let the market get outside the range, and then look for your retest and your your signal that the buyers can actually stay out of the market. The reverse is true to the short side. Let the market break out and prove to you that it can stay out. So if you're looking at your chart and it looks kind of sideways like this, that's the best plan. It's not to say that these other signals won't work out. It's just to say that every time you take a trade within this range, you're asking for it. It's, it's a higher risk environment. And the trade, frankly, may not work out. So, so long as you know that going in, you know, here's our trend change signal. We want to contain our risk. So we'll, can I cover it? Below the low, yes, I can. Okay, so long as I prepare to walk away from the three hundred and ten dollars, then all is well. But I recognize that this market is moving sideways, and as such, it's going to be a lot more difficult trading. It's going to be uh, perhaps limited on my follow throughs. I may see a lot deeper pullbacks, a lot more chop, and frankly, maybe even just a flat-out reversal. So here we go again. We've got the buyers and the sellers fighting for dominance. Uh, it looked as though the buyers were going to press higher, but no, not yet. Sellers aren't done yet. So here's another green bar cell now in the eagle. You could wait for the ATR to flip over. That would put the trade somewhere near this low. Or you could take the early entry and hope that it offers you a few more management options. If this fails now and prints a buy signal, well, then you'll definitely have your rule of three, and you can fully expect the market to rally. Oh, it's just, it's a tough trading date today.
In fact, you know, I'm showing you some of these signals, but I, I do suspect the market may put in a little bit of a rally. We can close out the Falcon trade because our trend line has changed color. So that mixes that. We're into the hard edge now on the Raptor band. We may still get that cloud crossover, but again, it's just very, very mixed up. You know, if you're looking at your, your Raptor, we had the double pullback. And now we're looking at this cloud crossover and the cloud crossover signal essentially a bull flag in this instance. So forgive me if I'm showing you too many things. I know uh, most of you would prefer that I just show you the high probability stuff and I'll, I'll try to <laughs> dial it back a little bit and wait for the higher probability setup. may jostle around uh, for the morning session today. That's how it's starting to look. They're just kind of trading a little higher, a little lower, a little higher, a little lower. We may see a commitment this afternoon after everybody's finally settled in. here on the Eagle trade. If you did try to short it here, it's probably a reasonable stop to place above here. And we'll give it a few more ticks. There we go. After all, if it fails again at this high, then we're probably going into a little bit of an uptrend. The Hawk, where we're doing the opposite trade, um, if I get print one more higher bar here, then I'll start rolling my stops up. Uh, that, you're very likely correct on that, Floyd. Floyd says, uh, the Fed speaks tomorrow. Market might be waiting for Ms. Yellen to give us her opinion. And you're probably right on that. All right, so that bar did print higher. I'm going to roll my stop now a little bit, not too aggressively. There we go, that'll do. Come on, don't, don't stop now. You can still get to my profit target and then you can fall off and hit my profit target on the Eagle trade. I know it's asking a little bit too much. <laughs> uh, okay, boys and girls, I, 
I need to close the trading room again a little bit earlier, so I'll be closing it at the bottom of the hour. If anybody has any questions, please type away. I will stay for your questions. Next week, things will be back to normal, but uh, this week, as I mentioned, I kind of committed to a little project. All right, so here come the buyers. They're going to push on through, and here on the eagle now, we do have that rule of three signal. One, two, three, counter trend signals. I would still look to enter above the high. I'm not so sure I would take it right on the hash mark. Just because, you know, things are, are so conflicted in this market. So we're going to get stopped here in a moment. Or you can always use the rule of three as our other counter trend signals work. You can wait for the with trend signal to print now. Right, so the market will come down. It'll make a little hiccup, a little bounce. <clears throat> print a with trend signal and that's one that you could take with a little bit more confidence. Still so choppy, my goodness. <laughs> 